Four years ago in Spain, the United States stamped their dominance on the sport of reigning by capturing gold. Now, four years later, the top reigners in the United States are fighting for the chance to represent their country. It's a clean slate final, and only the top four will earn a trip to Germany. It'll come down to the last sliding stop, up next. Welcome to Lexington, the Kentucky Horse Park and the USEF Open Reigning Championship. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Metters, with me Rick Weaver, past winner of the NRHA Futurity and the current chairman of the NRHA Judges Committee. We're used to seeing these competitors chase big dollars. This time, they all want to be a part of Team USA and the upcoming FEI World Equestrian Games in Aachen, Germany. They not only want to win this competition, but they're fighting for the right to represent their country. I'm really excited to be here in Lexington, Kentucky, the American Quarter Horse and Rain, and it doesn't get any better than that. The competitors will really be feeling the pressure. For more on that, here's Jennifer Reynolds. There are four riders competing here who really know what this is all about because they represented the United States at the World Equestrian Games in 2002. As the gold medal winning team, they got to stand on those platforms and hear their national anthem played, and they want to get back there in the worst way. Two of them are trying to get back there on the same horses, so it'd be really special for them, but there aren't any guarantees because everybody agrees this competition is as tough as it's ever been. It's <laughs> like asking somebody who plays football, how bad do you want to go to the Super Bowl, you know? I mean, it's... It's a big deal. It's everyone's dream, you know, so of course we're gunning for it. I'm not sure how you even say it, but it's, a, it's an honor to be able to go over and represent your country. All the guys that are showing tonight, I seem a little more nervous here than I, at, at a normal horse show because they always know that, you know, if you don't do well here, there's another show to go to. Well, that's not the case here. I mean, if you don't do well tonight, it's, it's a four-year wait. And I was there in Spain, and it was some kind of an experience for these American riders. First to work will be Bueno Starlight, shown by Casey Hinton, who lives in Whitesboro, Texas. Curtis McCloy is the owner. This is a stallion by Gray Starlight. And Rick, let's start with the judges' perspective. They're all uh, placed where they need to be and kind of give us the rundown. Certainly, there's five judges, and we throw out the high and the low score to get an average between the three. 70 is an average start for a reigning score, and we score that in half-point increments which would be between a minus one and a half and a plus one and a half. Now talk about this reigning pattern. Is it going to give these guys a chance, to, guys and gals actually, a chance to really show their horses? Pattern five is an excellent pattern for them to show. It has eight maneuvers, which allows for separation. Also, it has been a finals pattern for us for a long time and an awful lot of things and gives them a best chance to show their horse off. Well, two fast circles, then the nice transition into the small, slower circle, and first set of spins. It's a very good set of spins. You've got to remember the judges also have to count those spins, so they're responsible for the number of times that they turn and also the quality of the maneuver. And as he starts his circles now to the other side, you know, in the last decade, we've really seen uh, you know, these reigning patterns, or not necessarily the patterns, the runs, become much more aggressive. Uh, what's behind that? The quality and quantity of the horses that are raised for reigning competition has grown so much and also the young riders and the opportunities for people to show very good horses uh, attributes to the increased competition. What are you watching for as they make that transition to the small slow circle there? The focal point for a circle is the very s middle of the arena. That's where the s large fast and the small slow begin and end. So that is the part that you look for those transitions that appear. Another good turn. And now with this pattern, you'll see him change gears a little bit, get into the figure eight and the lead changes. Correct. In this maneuver group, there's the canter departure, two lead changes, and two large fast circles. The circles need to be similar in speed to the large fast circles that you saw uh, in, the first two, in the first circles. In terms of the lead change right here, you want it to just be seamless? You want it to be as smooth as possible. And again, that has to happen right in the middle of the arena. They have to change the front and hind legs at the same time or there'd be a penalty. Those are both good changes. This pair competed in Lexington last year. They finished uh, in 10th place. First big sliding stop on the way. The thing you gotta realize about this maneuver group, as soon as they change leads, it is part of it. So that approach, the stop and the rollback is all part of maneuver score.
as an average approach. A little more degree of difficulty, good approach, a good stop, and an average rollback. On to the next maneuver right away, we're on our approach by going around the end of the arena. Everything is pretty average here. Increase the speed, good approach. Average stop. What are you watching for in the backup? Again, you want it just the same as all maneuvers. You want it to be correct, you want it to be smooth, no resistance, and also straight. Now Casey showing off a little bit there on that backup. 222 and a half, first rider out, and that will really raise the bar. We're in Lexington, Kentucky, looking for high scores. Steve Schwarzenberger is next. Welcome back to Lexington, Kentucky. This is home of the United States Equestrian Federation. Back to our competition. Country Bay Barry will be the next to work. Steve Schwarzenberger is the rider. He lives in Longmont, Colorado. This is a stallion by Country Dunnett. We look at reigning pattern number five. I mean, the, the circles really set the tone for, for your reigning run, don't they? It certainly does. It gives you an opportunity to, to really exhibit your horse at speed and then also let them take and catch their air just a touch before you go on. So it, it really has a, a great crescendo to it. We know the riders feel the pressure here in a big event like this. How about the judges? A little bit of butterflies before it starts? You know, I think so. I know any time that I judge, I get just as excited as the riders do. You get uh, you get pretty high over there on your chair when things are going right, and, and uh, it's, it's a great event. Solid start here for Steve Schwarzenberger. It's a very good set of circles. You just kind of want to keep the momentum going with those spins. That was a nice set of spins. They were good. His start was okay. The spins were good. And then the finish could have been a little bit more on target. Good Kennedy part. He's increasing his speed. The horse is willingly guided. Comes right back and hits the center of that arena. Aggressive with those circles. Uh What's harder to judge, the younger horses or these older seasoned horses that are you know, just borderline perfection? The judging part isn't much different, but I can promise you for these riders, it's a lot harder for these older horses. A nice transition, horse again is willingly guided, nice square stop. Very good set of circles. Schwarzenberger lets him settle, starts his second set of spins now. Very nice set of spins. He had a, a start, the first spin or so was, was good, and then he got very good as the horse started to really turn. Nice carry part. Again, this large, fast circle needs to be similar to the large, fast circles he exhibited earlier. First lead change there. Good change right in the middle. Another good change. That first change, Jeff, he was a step late, and depending on where those judges are sitting in the arena, there might have been a half-point penalty for a, for a judge in there. Sets up his first sliding stop right here. Very good approach. Very good stop. And a very good rollback. The degree of difficulty he exhibited running to that stop certainly raises the score. Second sliding stop coming up. Going around the end, good. It's so a good the, approach. From the judge's perspective, right there, is that where you start judging the next maneuver? Correct. As soon as they leave that roll back, you're on to your next maneuver. Final sliding stop and a backup. All that remains for Schwarzenberger and Country Bay Barry. Gets in the ground nicely, 225 and a half, and that's gonna move Schwarzenberger to the lead. But it's very early in the competition. He did a lot of things right. For more on this run, let's check in with Jennifer Reynolds. That ride started out and just seemed to just keep building. Yeah, he was he was pretty good. He just I was a little tentative to get him started. And after I got rolling, I kind of got my adrenaline pump and started asking him harder. So it's just one of those deals. <laughs> 
And there's Craig Schmersel. He was a part of that 2002 USA team that won gold in Spain, riding Mr. Montana Nick, a stallion by Remenick. Craig lives in Overbrook, Oklahoma. He's been a guest analyst here on Horse TV and AQHA's Best of the West coverage. But uh, right now, Craig finds himself right in the spotlight. This horse is an elegant looking quarter horse. He just goes through, even when he's not doing much of anything, he's so attractive, he's gonna do pretty well. I think Craig likes that international competition. He won gold last year in Italy at the FEI World Reigning Masters Final. You know, a part of that team in Spain. And, uh, and he's one of those guys that's kind of become, you know, a nice transition from the young gun to one of the veterans that you really want to see on the USA Reigning team. I know Craig real well, and he's competitive in anything that he does. Million dollar Rainer, lots of experience, and a nice start to this Reigning run here on Mr. Montana Nick. It's a very good maneuver. Rainers like to make a statement with that mane, don't they? I certainly know that the wives like to make a statement <laughs> with it anyhow. Another very, very good maneuver. Nice and smooth, the horse is settled, hesitating. Steps off to another nice canter depart and onto a big fast circle. You also compete, how tough is it not to judge yourself while you're in the middle of a raining run? <laughs> well, it's, it actually helps for a lot of reasons because you not only get a chance to see what looks good, you find out that there's a lot of time you spend at home that doesn't make any difference. So it, it really tunes you in for training and for showing. Craig Smersel putting together a raining run that you would expect at an event like this and in these circumstances. For the people in the stands, this run is first after a drag, and his pattern in the sand would be just so equal on both sides that it'd be really fun for people to be able to see that. In the bird's eye view, you can see how exact he is with this reigning run, and now the figure eight, and we'll see how well this horse handles the lead changes. This horse is running around, willingly guided on a loose rein, Certainly representing the American quarters the way we would like. I know these American quarter horses are great athletes, and I think a reigning run really puts it all together where you, you can see the speed, the stop, the power, you know, all the ingredients are there in a reigning run. Nice figure eight. Good approach. Good rollback, that is excellent. Shows a lot of patience as he goes back to the end of the arena and sets up sliding stop number two. You gotta understand, these guys make this look easy. This is really very difficult. Now when you try this at home, you get a pretty good understanding of how tough this is. And you know, the great ones do, they make it look effortless and you know, it's uh, it's a lot of teamwork between the rider and the horse. That is the epitome of Western horsemanship. When the rider and the horse become one, that's what it's about. Craig Schmersel already has one gold medal. He'd love to have two. He'd like to make this USA team. 225 and a half in the lead at the moment. Is this good enough to bump that? That's the question. And it is. Craig Schmersel and Mr. Montana Nick. 226 and a half, and that was a pretty snappy run. Yeah, that was a very good run. He showed the horse to its potential and made no mistakes. Well, for more, let's check back in with Jennifer. I just wanted to stay clean and, and not make any mistakes. He'll take care of me if I can, if I can, you know, lead him the right way. Seems like he did. He did. <laughs> Crystal McNutt would like to get a taste of international competition. She's coming up next. The Kentucky Horse Park is looking forward to the year 2010. For more, here's Jennifer. Lexington, Kentucky is called the horse capital of the world. And when you walk onto the hallowed grounds of the Kentucky Horse Park, there's no doubt that's true. Visitors to this incomparable park are treated to museums, entertainment, plenty of hands-on activities, and even the chance to meet some of racing's legends. In fact, there's so much to do at the Kentucky Horse Park, many visitors don't realize what a world-class event facility this is. 
but the rest of the world certainly does, and that's why the Kentucky Horse Park has been awarded the 2010 FEI World Equestrian Games. Though it might be four years away still, preparation for the hundreds of thousands of expected visitors has already started, with the horse park undergoing major improvements to what is already a spectacular facility. We're going to construct a $36.5 million new indoor yeah. arena where raining will happen. Uh, and it's going to be 6,000 seats, climate controlled, all the state-of-the-art uh, facilities, and it's going to be a magnificent venue uh, to show the world uh, raining. Now it will be something to see in 2010, but for Crystal McNutt and Dunnett with Caution, they're wanting to make the World Equestrian Games coming up in Aachen, Germany, and this is a gelding by Hollywood Dunnett. And right now you have Craig Smersel setting the bar. He's up the ante, 226 and a half, and uh, that's what she's shooting for to take the lead. Jeff, I don't think she's scared of what Craig did. She's going after him. When you see scores like we're seeing here, you have to be aggressive. And you're right, Rick, that's exactly what she's doing. The degree of difficulty here is very high. She's got the horse guiding well, running at speed. There's a problem there. That's, she could have occurred a two-point penalty. Depending on where the judges are sitting in the arena is how they'll assess that. And that came in the transition from the fast circle to the slow circle? Correct. You know, and the scores here are so high, you, you hate to have any mistakes and give anything back because you're going to need every point that you can get. Not phased as she goes into that first set of spins. Very good spins. You also got to remember that first maneuver group. Even though she had a penalty, she'll still get credit for everything that she did. Now she starts the circles to the other direction. Just like the other side, her degree of difficulty is high. The horse is willingly guided. Running those circles right where they're supposed to be. You can see the loose rein and now the transition to the smaller slow circle. Oh, that was an excellent transition there. Next set of spins coming up. Very good spins, but just a little bit short turn and we've got a half point penalty there. Crystal has had success showing a variety of breeds. Settled very nicely here on this American Quarter Horse. Onto our figure eight maneuver again. The degree of difficulty here is high. She makes that look just like that she had before. Lead change there in the middle of the arena. And we set an aggressive tone with your reigning run. It's kind of hard to vary from that once the run starts. It certainly it? is. It would stand out if you would have part of it be aggressive and part of it not. That's not been a problem for Crystal. She has started this run uh, very aggressively, and it looks like that's exactly how she's going to finish it. First sliding stop here. Good approach, very good stop, and an average rollback. That rollback needs to come 180 degrees over his hocks. Collects her composure. Now we'll build speed again into that second sliding stop. Again, a very good approach, a very good stop, and a better rollback that time. Now she makes a minor hat adjustment as she gets set for that final sliding stop. The fastest she is going, there's a reason she's fixing her hat. That was a good approach. It was a little bit shorter. She didn't run her horse quite as far that time, but still a good maneuver. Done it with caution and Crystal McNutt. Shining here in Lexington, Kentucky, 224. That is third best at the moment, a very solid reigning run from them. Craig Schmersel is still setting the pace, 226 and a half. Steve Schwarzenberger is one point behind. 
Welcome back to the Kentucky Horse Park and the USEF Open Reigning Championship. Jeff Metters, along with former NRHA Futurity winner Rick Weaver. You know, the key here is not necessarily finishing number one. You want to finish in the top four, make Team USA, and head to the upcoming FEI World Equestrian Games in Aachen, Germany. We've seen some brilliant runs so far, but Craig has the lead. Crystal hurt herself with the penalties, and if these riders want to make that top four, they're going to have to stay out of the penalty box. Tom McCutcheon is next. He was part of that team in 2002 that won gold at the World Equestrian Games in Spain, riding rough-hearted Jack. This is a stallion by a little rough Peppy. Married into the McQuay family. Of course, his father-in-law, Tim McQuay, the all-time richest rider in the NRHA, and his wife, Mandy, is the all-time richest non-pro. So Tom's got to fight for his own identity in that group. Tim and Colleen McQuay are certainly proud of their grandson, Cade. He's been bitten by the reigning bug. Boy, another generation. What a reigning family that is. And, you know, Tom's seasoned in international competition, so kind of like Craig Smirshel, you expect him to come to play today. Make no mistake, there's not a rider out there that doesn't think they can still win. Really good start by Tom. Good circles, good spins, he's on his way. This pair finished fifth in this competition last year. They currently lead the point standings in the FEI world reigning competition. McCutcheon's one of the guys I think that you want to be on Team USA. Tom certainly enjoyed his journey last time when he went to the World Equestrian Games and I know that he's looking forward to it again. It was his brother Scott that won the individual gold in Jerez, Spain. That's a very competitive family. I don't care if it's hockey, basketball, whatever it is, those boys are competing. You can tell Tom has his mind on his business right here and a, a very good start to his reigning run. He's right where he needs to be. Another very good set of maneuvers. Great camera angle right there to see those spins. Hours of training paying off right now for Tom McCutcheon. Our next maneuver group again is the figure eight. Good Kennedy part. From a judge's perspective, I mean, I, I don't want to use the, take the word, take it for granted, but I mean, do you, you just expect the, the lead changes to be very snappy and, and right on? Certainly not. What you have to do is you actually change your focus from going from the overall to strategic. So you actually will focus in on their feet when they get to that part to make sure that there wasn't any penalty. Another good maneuver group by Tom. You know, for the fan, you watch a raining run, it's just kind of poetry, but from the judge's perspective, it's extremely technical, isn't it? It is. There's every piece of it. You have to have your focus in the right place, and you have to be make sure that you are at all times have what's in front of you going on. So when you have a chance and something happens, you've got to make sure that you leave that behind, give it a score, and stay with what's going on in front of you right now. Two sliding stops out of the way for Tom McCutcheon. Tom's having a very nice run. Aww. Trying to ice the cake right here. Another competitor who has a gold medal from Spain, 225 for Rough Hearted Jack and Tom McCutcheon. And Tom seems very pleased with what he got out of his horse. An excellent approach and a good stop. 225 will put him on the bubble. You can see Del Hendricks right there, million dollar Rainer, Starbucks sidekick is the horse, and <laughs> kind of a mean smile from Del. Yeah, he loosens up a little bit. He's a good guy. Ever since they did the one picture in the in the Rainer of him, they've known him as being like the mean guy. <laughs> well, we'll see if that snarl can pay off for him right here. This is a gray stallion by Smart Starbuck, and he's the current NRHA president, Dell is, at the moment. He 
He's a guy that, like Tom McCutcheon and Craig Schmersel, kind of a next generation that has experienced a lot of success. Dell's sacrifice this year to be president and still be competing has been just unbelievable. This is an excellent set of maneuvers here. Very good large fast circle. The small slow circle transition happened right where it's supposed to. It's a very good maneuver. First set of spins right here. You, were, you and I were talking before the run, and uh, the first part of this pattern fits this horse and, and Dell very well. He's very strong, especially in the spin area. This horse always has very good or excellent spins. Let's him settle. Circles now to the other side. One thing I promise you, Dell's not going to leave anything outside. This pair was the reserve champion in the NRHA Derby in 2005. This little horse has been so consistent every time Dell's asked him for something, he's always been there for him. Dell has three runner up finishes in that NRHA Derby. It'll be long before he wins two or three. It's one of the few things he hasn't won. Final set of spins for him right here. Well, you're right. That horse really it's flattens little, out and he can move. He's a little short there, Jeff. He went ahead and had a half point penalty, but that was an excellent set of spins. You gotta remember that those spins, it's not perfect, that it's excellent when it's a plus one and a half. Into the lead chains, center of the arena. He's really going after him. He's had a good pattern up to this point. There are some big scores ahead of him, and he is going to have to score big to have a chance to make Team USA headed for Aachen, Germany. I promise you, that little horse stays with him. He'll get there. That time he had a good approach and a good stop and a good rollback. Time to hit the gas on it again. Second sliding stop coming up. Once again, a good approach and good stop. The rollback was, was not very good. Well, in this competition, every half point really counts. Don't want to give anything away. Final sliding stop for Del Hendricks. Once again, a good approach and good stop. That spin penalty and that rollback on that one side is going to throw him back in the pile. 226 and a half for Del Hendricks, and that's going to put him on an even plane with Craig Schmersel. So Del Hendricks trying to fight his way on the Team USA. Very good with the spins. Let's go back down to Jennifer. Del, this is a horse you've really had a lot of success on, and everything went well out there tonight. Yeah, it's a little scary, but. Things, things come together pretty good. I mean, he's just been a super-minded horse all, all the time. How does it feel? Well, I just hope that it holds on. I really want to be on that team bad, okay. real bad. Raining can be stressful. Del Hendricks and Craig Smurs will now tie it at 226 and a half. Schwarzenberger and McCutcheon on the team at the moment. More raining still to come. Welcome back to the Kentucky Horse Park, the Hall of Champions. That's the great Cigar. John Henry is now in his late 20s. What a horse he has been. And then Taylor Fed, a two-time AQHA world champion. What a great racehorse. Won the world title in 99 and 2001. That is smart Paul Olina. They call him Paul Aaron Ralston, the rider. He lives in Silt, Colorado. His wife is the owner. And this is a stallion by Smart Chick. Now they'd like to earn a spot uh, in the international spotlight and head to the World Equestrian Games in Aachen, Germany. I got the opportunity to judge the AQHA World Show last year, and Aaron and his wife Megan both were very tough on this horse. Well, the aggressiveness right away, and you know the scores merit that, but that's just become the reigning style anymore. Nice transition into that small, slower circle. He's got a very good start. Those horses make it look so easy. They go from, you know, full speed to, you know, less than half speed and just the blink of an eye. 
Also, you got to realize the American corridors, this is what they're supposed to look like. What a great looking animal. Very good spins, good start, very good turn, and an excellent shutoff. Now the circle's to the other side. Notice that he got up to speed pretty quickly. That's a good situation for the judge to see him being that aggressive that early. You touched on his wife Meg riding this horse. They were the AQHA amateur reigning world champions last year, runner-ups in 2004. I mean, this horse has served the family very well. Meg can really ride. She did an excellent job last year at the AQHA World Show. Look at that speed in that small slow circle. Just. This horse is a magician. It's very attractive. Everything has looked really, really well so far. And when Aaron brags about this horse, it's his stops. He says he's a really big stopper. So, you know, if that's any indication, the best is yet to come. He's got a great start of this. And this horse really excels at, at the stop and the rollback. So this is a really a good opportunity to, for him to go after him. Next on that to-do list, though, is a very smooth lead change. That's what they're shooting for in the center of the arena. And remember that there's a couple contestants that's went ahead and pushed themselves back because of penalty, so Aaron needs to stay out of the penalty box during this time. Second and final lead change coming up right here. Things are looking good. Now it's time for him to go do his thing. Well, he says Paul can stop, and let's see if that's the case. It's a good approach, an excellent stop, and a very good rollback. This horse really has some style when he hits the ground. Bends his back nice and flat. It's really exceptional. This is an older horse, too, fold in 1994. <laughs> excellent. Well, two for two in those sliding stops. One more remains and a backup. We'll see if Aaron Ralston can change things at the top of the leaderboard. He stayed out of that penalty box like you said he needed to do. Final stop. The approach was good. Another excellent stop. And an average backup. Smart Paul Olina, they call him Paul and Aaron Ralston surging to the lead. 229 and a half. And really from the very beginning, he set a great tone. The spins were great, and he finished it off with the stops. This horse has always been very strong at the end. Aaron did a great job of exhibiting his horse. That was exciting to watch. It was, uh, it was great. It was a long time coming. Um, my wife always gets on me for not riding hard enough. And uh, I just love, love this horse so much. I, I'm always too nice to him. And tonight I pushed him, and he was right there. I mean, he was... He was right there. I can't ask for anything more. An emotional Aaron Ralston. He and Paul, 229 and a half. They have taken the lead. Hendricks and Smersel now tied for second. Welcome back to the Kentucky Horse Park. You're greeted here by the statue of the great man of war. And that is Easy Odie Wiz, ridden by Matt Mills of Scottsdale, Arizona. This is a stallion by Topsail Wiz. And you know, Rick, when you look at the day sheet, this is a horse that kind of jumps off the page. This horse has the whole package. He's got a great mind. His athletic ability is as good as anybody's, and he's also gorgeous. That said, that's the pressure that Matt Mills feels. You know, when you, when you have a horse that should win or people think will win, I mean, that's when the pressure really mounts up. You have to go out there and get that kind of a run out of him. They came real close to the World Show last year. They're, they're shown quite a bit together, and, and Matt really knows this horse. Third in the senior reigning at the World Show last year. We got an excellent start, Jeff. Boy, two aggressive circles, and now he slows down to the small circle. From the judge's perspective, nice transition. Very good transition. Very good large circles, and a very good stop. And now a chance to see how good he is at those spins. And the answer is good. It's an excellent set of spins. Wow, what a great start for Easy Odie Wiz and Matt Mills. 
Now they'll focus on the right side. Matt's really a good athlete too, and I don't think that he's the least bit intimidated by everybody else. Started out as a youngster in Western Pleasure, horsemanship and trail, and all of that stuff, believe it or not, will help you as you, you make a transition to reigning. This is good stuff, Jeff. Started reigning in 1996, and I think it's all been leading to this moment right here. So far, Matt Mills and Easy Odie Wiz have been flawless. That's very hard to do. You can tell the crowd is very much into it. Last set of spins right here. Another very good set of spins. He's on his way. Making it look easy, and that's what it's all about. Matt Mills, born and raised in Long Beach, California. Not really a hotbed for Rainers, but uh, it's worked well for him. The challenge for this horse is that he does everything so easily that the degree of difficulty sometimes doesn't look quite as much, but Matt's really got it hung out there. Wow. Spent five years as an assistant trainer with Del Hendricks, so a chance to beat his old boss here. He's on his way. He's done everything so well, and now we'll see how he handles that first sliding stop. Good approach, very good stop, and a good rollback. And how about the composure exhibited by horse and rider in this situation? This is a pretty good combination. Look at the sand underneath that horse's belly and his <laughs> high legs from stopping. It's a good indication that he really gets down and into that stop. He's still right where he needs to be, Jeff. So if you're in the lead at this point in time, you might be a little bit nervous as Easy Odie Wiz and Matt Mills put the finishing touches on this run. He's got a chance, Jeff. Well, it was all about potential when they got here, and Matt Mills and Easy Odie Wiz living up to the billing. What a run here at the horse park. The spins were great. Hard to knock this run in any way, shape, or form. 231 and a half for Matt Mills and Easy Odie Wiz. He is the new leader. And Rick, you're exactly right. I mean, they did so many things right. This, the combination of the American Quarter Horse, this is what they're supposed to be like. He has the athleticism, the looks, and the mind. He showed us a little bit of everything, and Matt Mills has surged to the lead, 231 and a half. Aaron Ralston in second, here's Jennifer. Wow. I, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I guess it's fair to say that went just the way you wanted it. Yeah, it went exactly to plan. I mean, couldn't have gone any better. I'd envisioned that run in my head, and you know, most of the time, it's hard to get that exact run done, but right when I loped off, I could just feel that horse was just right, right on. And he's always been that way, but today was just extra special. He's made the team, but will he win? Look out, the NRHA's all-time richest rider is coming up next. Back in Lexington, Matt Mills signing autographs. When you do the math on that 231 and a half, you know, 70's average, it's a little over 77. That's why he's in the lead. That throw out the high and the low, and that's what they came up with. Watch out for this guy. Here's the NRHA's all-time richest rider. This is Tim McQuay, Mr. Nickadool. This is a stallion by Mr. Dual Pep. And you now Tim, uh, second guy to reach the million dollar mark in earnings at the NRHA, but he was the first guy to crest two million. Tim's one of those guys, he's, he's changed with the times, hadn't he? You, you've seen rating change in the last, uh, 10, 12 years, and he's been around a while, but he has kept up with these young guys very well. Tim has certainly done a good job of making sure that he had the quality horses to keep competing. Not just being a great competitor himself, he's putting himself in position to stay competitive. He's won every NRHA sanctioned event at least once, and he's an AQHA world champion on two occasions. First set of spins. Good start, very good spins. 
and an excellent finish. Talk about the judges' standpoint. You see a run like Easy Ody Wiz. Is that, you know, for, for the exhibitors, is that, is that a tough act to follow? Well, for these exhibitors, every one of these guys are so competitive, I think it just juices them up some more. As far as the judges go, you just look at what's in front of you the whole time and, and uh, let them bring it to you. It's up to these riders to separate themselves. The judges just write down what's in front of them. Tim McQuay knows how to do that. Transition now to the small circle. It's a very good job. Right where it's supposed to be, right in the middle of the arena. Spins now to the right for Tim McQuay. Very solid first half of this reigning pattern. That's why he's a leading money earner. Turns Mr. Nicodule loose now on the figure eight. Here comes the first lead change. Good change in his latest step. Those are the things those judges pick up on. We'll see if he can improve on that a little bit. The lead change now back to the left. That was better. There's no penalty there. Now Tim gets himself and Mr. Nickadool ready for that first sliding stop. Very good approach and very good stop and roll back. He's not trying to be second. It would be fun to see Tim McQuay a part of Team USA as they head to Aachen, Germany for the FEI World Equestrian Games. Right now, all that's on McQuay's mind is sliding stop number two. Well, if it was on his mind, he got done what he wanted to. It was a dandy now, just back to the end of the arena and the final sliding stop and a backup. And it will all be in the hands of the judges. Good approach, very good stop. And a good backup. He's got a chance. Hats off to Mr. Moneybags, Tim McQuay, the NRHA's all-time leading money earner, 229 and a half. He's gonna finish in a tie for second place and make Team USA headed for Aachen, Germany in the FEI World Equestrian Games. A tie for second and a split for fourth. So a tie for that all-important four spot. Let's go to Jennifer Reynolds. Craig Smursall and Dell Hendricks were tied for that fourth and final place on the team. There were mechanisms in place to break the tie, but they all ended up in a tie as well. So the decision was made to let the two riders decide whether they would bring their horses back out and ride it off or flip a coin for that final spot on the team. Dell and I tied, and it went through all the tie-breaking procedures, and it, we still were tied, and it went to the ground jury or committee or whatever. They tied us too, so it came down to Dell and I, and they want us to flip a coin. I don't want to flip. I don't want to run off because it doesn't do our team any good to make another run here tonight when our horses are tired. So I just agreed to step aside and let Dell go. He's a good representative. I'm sure he'll he'll be tough to beat there, you know. Neither one of us felt very confident that running it off was the best thing for the team and the horses. And neither one of us were very comfortable with a coin toss. And so when we got together and Craig said that he was just going to step aside and let me be on the team, I just I had a hard time believing it. It's a huge gesture. I mean, I'd like to thank Ginger and Craig for doing that. It's an opportunity of a lifetime to be on a World Equestrian team. This isn't the first time that Craig Smersall has made this kind of gesture to help the team. Last year, one of the competitors, Tim McQuay, was not going to be able to go to Italy to compete after this event because he didn't have a horse to take. Craig loaned him one. There are the four that will represent Team USA, and it's Matt Mills who will be the anchor. Well, you know, it's huge just to have the honor to, to represent, you know, your, your country. And it's just nice, you know, to, to go out there and, 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 and get the job done the way you know you, know, you, the way you, know you can, the way you, you train at home. And uh, shoot, I'm at a loss for words. I'm so out of air. Congratulations to Matt Mills, and good luck to Team USA as they head to Aachen, Germany, for the FEI World Equestrian Games. For Rick Weaver, I'm Jeff Metters. Thanks for watching. So long, everyone.